If you challenge a man to do something, he will engage and do it successfully. But Leng challenged him to quit his addiction, despite trying hard. He wore her laps again and again. This is probably your case. You have seen dozens, if not hundreds, videos about your adoption, but you are still here. If you follow this video carefully, it will be the last time you have to see something like this. Inshallah. Why am I sure of this? I have struggled firsthand with these relapses, but I have found a Islamic method to stop them forever. Follow to the end, cause I think the last step is the one that made me stop. Number 1. Truly understand the harms of addiction. By now, we all know the harms of addiction. Dopamine, instant gratification, and other irrelevant information to quit. First of all, you are destroying any connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because even though you are aware that it is forbidden, you keep doing it. Your soul, when you relapse again, it's consumed by shaitan. You are constantly living in guilt and accumulating so much shame that it has now become normal to live with it. You'll begin to attract all your negative things and people around you. I know you don't like to hear the hard truth. You would rather have heard things like, oh look, you must stop counting the day. But that's not the case. I seriously want you to stop relapsing because we're all brothers and sisters together in Islam. Second, in addition to ruining your connection with Allah, you would also ruining social relations. The fact that you want to quit but can't creates deep embarrassment and also affects your social situation such as anxiety, stress and fear. Don't you see how harmful addictions are? Not only do they ruin your life, but they also ruin the afterlife. Number 2 Use the lucid part of your mind. Lucidity is determined when you are fully aware of your choice. When you are sinning, caught up in pleasures, the lucid part of your mind goes out of order and everything you have learned goes down the drain. Vulnerable moments like this, shaitan gets better of you. So how he can be lucid all the time? You simply cannot always be. Understand first at what times you are less lucid. Usually humans are less in the morning and at night. So, suppose you are addicted to corn, avoid keeping your phone in bed and sleep as early as possible. And in the morning, don't stare at your phone, do something else. When you are fully lucid, you are unlikely to fall into temptation. If you happen to think about something, you would firmly say, No, Allah is watching, and you would think no more about it. Number 3. Lower your gaze. Many people think that lowering gaze is only helpful when you meet a person of the opposite sex on the street, but you can use it any time. You may be thinking that lowering your gaze is like blocking corn sights, so it cannot work for long. But as described in many hadiths, on judgment day your body parts will speak against you. So it's not about ignoring, it's about protecting your gaze. Now I will explain the real power of the gaze. Imagine you eat a dish for the first time, and you like it. Then you decide to eat it every day. Going on days, you will get sick of it and you won't like it anymore. So to prevent this from happening, you limit yourself to eating it a few times. The same goes for protecting your gaze. If you want to overcome your addiction to corn, you have to desexualize your mind. So you have to lower your gaze when necessary. So when you are with your partner, as in the case of food, it will be a more special time for you. Number 4. Develop good habits. You cannot overcome your addictions if you are overwhelmed with bad habits in the beginning. First of all, forget your phone. You're using it too much for junk content. The best thing you could do is delete haram talk, it's very addictive, brother. Second, organize a morning and night routine. Watch these videos if you need help. Third thing, all your gurus have probably told you this, read a lot. You literally have the most wisdom book ever. Don't ignore the Quran. If you need English translation, link in the comments. Fourth, don't put off prayers until later. Shaitan's trick is to get you to put off the prayers and then get you to skip them always. Know that developing good habits can radically reduce the chances of relapse. Number 5. Allah is always watching you. You already know this, but you don't realize its power. Do not think you can hide or fall back and then ask for false forgiveness. Allah is well aware of this. That is why the best thing is to ask Allah for help. Write in the comments all the dua you know to get out of addictions. You would help our brothers a lot. The next time you are about to relapse, take a deep breath and imagine that God is looking down on you from above. The Prophet saw said, if someone intends to do a good deed and does not do it, then Allah will write for him a complete good deed. And if he has done it, then Allah will write for him from 10 to 700 times until many more times. And if someone intended to do a bad deed and does not do it, then Allah will write a complete good deed. And if he has done it, then Allah will write a bad deed. Sahih al-Bukhari. Be able to understand this opportunity. 
Make good use of Allah's mercy. It has no end. Number 6. Be patient and trust the process. Patience is one of the qualities most befitting a Muslim. Use this trait to overcome your addictions. Healing from addiction can take days, months, and in some cases even years, so don't put too much pressure on yourself. If you should relapse, rather than demoralize yourself, try to understand what you did wrong, ask God for forgiveness, and start over. Accept the fact that relapsing is part of the journey to recover from addiction. It is not about making the longest streak and then bragging about it. It is about something serious that needs to be resolved immediately. Ask Allah for help. He will not ignore you at all. Allah loves it when you do your best for His sake. Number 7. Changing Environment and Friendships the Prophet ﷺ said, A man follows the religion of his friend, therefore everyone should consider who he makes a friend. Many people might think that the true friend is the one who treats them cheerfully and with whom they often have fun. But few people can recognize a true friend from a friend. A true friend is someone you deeply respect from whom you can take inspiration from his qualities and he can take inspiration from yours. There are people who rather than feeling lonely would even make friends with even the most toxic people. Many people would say, No, I wouldn't be influenced by that. But without realizing it, you will begin to follow in their footsteps. Stay away from toxic people. Even if you should be alone, Allah is with you. In addition to the people you hang out with, you should also be comfortable in the environment you are in. If you are often in messy or noisy places, they may cause you stress and anger, even causing you to relapse. What can help you? if you are not in a condition to change your external environment, is to change what you have inside. If you would start cleaning your soul, you would realize that you are surrounded solely by gold, but your ego does not allow you to see it. If you want to understand how to clean your soul, you could watch this video, but I will do a more specific one soon, inshallah. Number 8. Fix Mental Health I want you to look at this picture. Exactly half of the teenagers in the United States suffer from mental disorders. It's so sad that such young people claim to suffer from depression, anxiety, and so on. The point is that we are underestimating our health both physical and mental. The sad reality is that most people prefer wealth over health. They believe that with wealth you can buy health, but what they buy is only the antidote that sometimes can only make conditions worse. True health is a condition in which the mind and body are fully functional and can perform any function without deficiencies. Know that mental health is essential for you to have self-control over yourself and your life. Comment SubhanAllah. If you have reached this point in the video, before going to the last step, make sure you fully understand the previous ones. Now I want to tell you about the method I think is most effective for quitting. When I was 16 years old, I was overwhelmed with distractions and addictions. I didn't know how to get out of it anymore, until one day I discovered the self-improvement movement that was helping young people like me get better. However, I felt something was missing, because although I improved, I always relapsed. At that time, Ramadan was getting closer, so I decided to do it as best I could. After the month of fasting, I don't think there was a better mental condition ever made. I could control every impulse perfectly and was able to overcome my addictions. I can give you an explanation of what happened. Since during the fasting month we give up food and water, how could it ever occur to you to ruin the month for a stupid addiction? This month is holy. Billions of angels descend to earth and shaitan is locked up. You have no excuse. I know you can't do fasting at this time, so for now I urge you to do your best to stop relapsing with the previous methods and when the time comes for Ramadan, don't waste it as you always have. Use it to purify your soul. Congratulations! You have figured out how to overcome your addictions. Now, you should expand your knowledge by watching these videos.